I invite you to take breaths and, and just immerse yourself into this time and space as we offer uh, this service of prayer and gratitude. In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. Let us join our voices together in hymn number 689, Praise and Thanksgiving. Thank you. Please be seated. Please join me in our opening prayer. Generous God, for the abundance of your blessings to us day by day and year by year, we give you our thanks. For the simple pleasures of life, for garden harvests, coffee conversation, and familiar surroundings, for health and strength to appreciate the wonder of life, for needs met and desires fulfilled, we give you our thanks. For foods distributed to nourish body and spirit, for homes with supp supply shelter, which nurture order and beauty and offer hospitality, we give you our thanks. With hearts that forgive as freely as you have forgiven, 
with enthusiasm of spirit for the gift of life, with music which declares your everlasting goodness, with prayers for mutual understanding and peace, we worship you with joy, with created pursuits which contribute our God-giving talents, with words which honor you as creator, redeemer, and Holy Spirit, with time volunteered and dedicated to service in church and community, with years committed to extending the love of Jesus Christ, we worship you with joy. With gifts of money which reach farther than we can manage ourselves, with deeds done in service of neighbor and stranger, with holy days set apart to celebrate your goodness and grace, with family and friends, distant and nearby, we worship you, God, with grateful hearts and joyful spirits. Alleluia. Amen. This is Psalm 105 from the Psalms Now by Leslie Brandt. How great is my God and how I love to sing his praises. Whereas I am often frightened when I think about the future and confused and disturbed by the rapidly changing world around me. My heart is secured and made glad when I remember how God has cared for me throughout the past. When I came from my mother's womb, God's hand was on me. Through parents and people who cared, he loved me and sheltered me and set me on his course for my life. Through illness and accident, my God has sustained me. Around pitfalls and precipices, he has safely led me. When I became rebellious and struck out on my own, he waited patiently for me to return. I fell on my face in weakness and failure. He gently set me on my feet again. He did not always prevent me from hurting myself, but he comforted and healed my wounds. Even out of the broken pieces of my defeats, he created a vessel of beauty and usefulness. Through trials and errors, Failures and successes, my God has cared for me. From infancy to adulthood, he has never let me go. His love has led me or carried me through the valleys of sorrow and the highlands of joy. Through times of want and years of abundance, he has bridged impassable rivers and moved impossible mountains. Sometimes through me, sometimes despite me, he seeks to accomplish his purposes in my life. He has kept me through the stormy past. He will secure and guide me through the perilous future. I need never be afraid, no matter how uncertain the months or years ahead of me. How great is my God and how I love to sing his praises. We now hear God's word to us from the New Testament, from Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. 
Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. There is so much in our lives for which we can be thankful, isn't there? Think of all the blessings that you have, your loved ones have. Make a list sometime of all those things. Our faith. I can't imagine going through life with all of its ups and downs and challenges without the bedrock of faith, a relationship in God, where you have the assurance that God, the creator of the universe, loves you, walks with you each and every day. Thank God for our faith, our family, our friends, our freedom, our pets, because they're family too. Good health, good conversation, laughter. Isn't it wonderful that God created the universe and human experience with laughter? Simple day, everyday things that we might take for granted, electricity, air conditioning, heat, indoor plumbing. Having enough food to eat, and that's not always the case for everyone around the world that we do have food. Giving thanks for the people in our lives, not just our family and friends, but our whole community. Think of all the people who serve us, who help make our lives more manageable and healthier and better. People who educate us, people who care for us, nurses, doctors, caregivers, medical emergency personnel, first responders, people who have sacrificed for us, our veterans, our troops and their families, and they may be living far apart from one another. For all these things, we have gratitude to God and gratitude for each other. We all like feeling appreciated, and the same is true for God. God rejoices in our prayers of thanks, appreciation. Imagine giving us all these wonderful, beautiful blessings of creation and not hearing a thank you from God's creation. But God rejoices in our giving thanks. First Thessalonians says, give thanks in all circumstances, for that is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Giving thanks it blesses the people for whom we give our thanks, and it also blesses us with this deep sense of gratitude. Cicero said that gratitude is not only the greatest of the virtues, but the parent of all others. So really our relationship with God begins with gratitude. Thank you, God. Our faith is grounded in gratitude. It's a way of living. It's an attitude that inspires all these wonderful virtues that we read about in Colossians. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. That all comes from being grateful to God and for each other. Everything we have is from God. You and I did not choose to be born. God gave us the gift of life. That We had nothing to do with that. We didn't choose our family, our parents, if we had siblings or not. I'm an only child. That wasn't my choice. It's just the way it is. We didn't choose the country in which we were born. Boy, I thank God many times that I was born where I was, not to diminish other countries, but I'm very grateful for freedoms and opportunities, 
all the sacrifices made here. Our food, our drink, the air we breathe, it's all given to us as a gift from God. And the gifts that you have in yourself, your interests, your abilities, they're given to you by God. You're good at certain things in a unique way that others aren't. You have a particular kind of interest in life. And those are given to you by God. Your calling is so unique. We don't determine our calling. We prayerfully discern it. That frees us from wasting time comparing ourselves to others. Giving thanks for the miracle of you. You are so unique. Comparisons which the world tries to force on us has no place in the kingdom of God where there is grace and everyone is valuable. So count your blessings, not any kind of perceived shortcomings that the world might tell us we have. Be thankful that you and everyone is precious. Count your blessings, not your worries. Turn your worries into worship. That wasn't always the case, especially as we look at our Old Testament passages throughout Scripture. There was a lot of grumbling that went on as the Hebrew people tried to find their way to the promised land. Remember that God has led you out of the desert and into the promised land, Moses encourages the followers to say. Remember, what a powerful word. Give thanks not only for your present blessings, but remember the blessings that you've had throughout your life. Don't take those for granted. Instead of grumbling, be grateful. I had a friend who lived in Seattle, Washington, and she talked about how it, they had a lot of cloudy days. And uh, when it was sunny and nice and a blue sky, she would really be excited and uh, tell her friends. But sometimes people did so much grumbling up there because they were so cloudy all the time. She recalls saying, boy, isn't today a beautiful day? The sun is shining. The sky is blue, and her friend said, yeah, but it's going to rain tomorrow. No place for grumbling. I love this passage in Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Focus on what God has done for us. Focus on what God can do for us and with us. You know, many times people go through life saying, oh, I have to do this, or oh, I have to do that. What if instead, with a life grounded in gratitude, we say, I get to do that. For instance, uh, like with school, oh, I have to study for my test. What if we say I get to learn something new? I get to become smarter. I get to expand my interests and learn things. And I get to develop as a person so that I can really make an impact in the world. I get to. You know, in my own life, every Sunday, I have to give a sermon, or do I say I get to do a sermon? I think for me, being a pastor is the greatest job in the whole world. I love it. Yes, it's a responsibility, and I take it very seriously. It's an honor to give a sermon every Sunday, to speak about God in front of people Amen. I get to do that. To inspire people to apply the Holy Scripture to our everyday lives. I get to give a sermon every Sunday. When I was young, I didn't want to practice the piano. I have to practice the piano. I get to practice the piano. 
being able to develop the gifts of music and to share those gifts with others, to inspire. Music brings people together in such positive ways, making friends, uplifting spirits. I get to practice the flute or the piano, or even to have a musical instrument. So we can turn our I have to's in life into I get to's, recognizing the opportunities that we have. So appropriate the hymn that we have, uh, the psalm that we have today, recognizing God's blessings. King David commissioned uh, thanksgiving when uh, the Ark of the Covenant was brought into Jerusalem. And he gathered together a number of Levite priests, and their job was to offer regular thanks to God. That's their specific task. It was like a gratitude committee. Our church needs a new committee, a gratitude committee. These were times for giving thanks, not just for the return of the Ark of the Covenant, not just for feast days, but for every day, these Levite priests, everyday life, given the commission of giving thanks. That can inspire us in everyday life, giving thanks. I had the good fortune of uh, meeting Reverend Carol Howard Merritt, who's a Presbyterian minister and author, and I, I heard her speak not long ago. And she told a story where she was at a interreligious party in Washington, DC. And a woman approached her at the party. And she said, well, what do you do? What brings you to the party? And she said, I'm a Presbyterian minister. Oh, my mom is a Presbyterian. When she was in the hospital, people from her church, they watched over her. They made sure that she received good care at the hospital. People even sat with her when she was in the hospital. And the people from church even brought her flowers. And they visited her also when she came home from the hospital. They called her on the phone. They brought her meals. It was all free. They didn't charge her for any of it, the flowers or the food, the home delivered meals. And Pastor Merritt said, well, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we do. She said, really? That's fantastic. You know, you should advertise that. <laughs> Gratitude, it inspires our kindness, our generosity, it's simply what we do. We care for each other, being grateful that God cares for us and that others care for us. Scripture says, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers, giving thanks to God's continued blessings. I'd like to end with a story that directly relates to the hymn that we're going to be singing, hymn number 839, Now Thank We All Our God. It was written by a Lutheran pastor many years ago in the 1600s by Martin Renkart. And it was written, this prayer about giving thanks to God during great times of adversity, during the Thirty Years' War in Germany, Cities were devastated through all the war and the battles through three decades. During this time, the population of Germany dwindled from 16 million to 6 million. That is just an incredible stat, uh, statistic. In 1617, the year the wars began, Martin Reinhardt, the son of a copper smith from the town of Ellenburg, was an ordained minister. And as serving a Lutheran congregation, he was assigned a pastorate in his very own hometown of Ellenburg. It was a walled city and it was seen as a place of refuge and safety for thousands of refugees fleeing the war. The city soon became overcrowded. It began to lack food, it lacked supplies and time. It became not a city of refuge, but really a city of death. Crime was rampant. Martin Reinhardt faithfully served his congregation throughout the entire three decades of the devastation. 
In the midst of the suffering all around him, he composed over 60 hymns, and they were all about faith and hope. Reinhardt's circumstances and the people around him were very difficult. He was no Pollyanna. People knew everyday pain and suffering in ways that here in Penyan we would find difficult to relate to. Nineteen years after he arrived, a terrible plague hit the city in 1636. And during that time, all of the other ministers in the walled city either died or they left. Some of the ministers fled. Martin Reinkart alone remained, and he buried more than 4,500 men, women, and children. He conducted up to 45 funerals a day during the plague. He even buried his beloved wife. In the midst of the terrible plague, he wrote the famous hymn that we're going to be singing in just a moment with the words, now thank we all our God with heart and hand and voices whose wondrous things have done in whom his world rejoices. He was able to find things to give thanks, to rejoice in God's love and strength. Give thanks in all circumstances, the Apostle Paul tells us. In the original Greek, it's a command he was imprisoned, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked. No matter our circumstances, greet each day with gratitude. Give thanks for the blessings that each day holds and that each person has. Amen.
Friends, let's pray together. God of the living, with all your creatures, great and small, we sing your bounty and your goodness, for in the harvest of land and ocean, in the cycles of the seasons and the wonders of each creature, you reveal your generosity. Teach us the gratitude that dispels envy, that we may honor each gift as you cherish your creation and praise you in all times and places. That this day may be holy, good, and joyful. We pray in gratitude to you, O Lord. That we may offer to you our worship and praise along with the work of our hands, minds, and hearts. We pray in gratitude to you, O Lord that we may strive for the well-being of all creation. We pray in gratitude to you, O Lord, that in the pleasures and pains of life, we may know the love of Christ and be thankful. We pray in gratitude to you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your holy ones, in trusting one another and all our life to Christ. We pray in gratitude to you, O Lord, that we may always and everywhere give thanks to you, O God, for all of our blessings and the giftedness. We pray in gratitude to you, O Lord. And now we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray the, oh, we just did that, sorry. Closing prayer. Holy One, you who created the heavens and earth, the snails and gazelle, the dandelion and rose, inchworms and kittens and heirloom tomatoes and kites and ocean waves and all the hues of the color blue, we are grateful. Grateful that we have any sense of your mysterious presence. Grateful that you give us life and ask simply that we live abundantly and fully into your calling to be your love in this world. Even so, we know that instead of loving recklessly and wastefully, we live hedging our bets and on the safe side. But we care, O God, we do care. And so we pray for those who suffer, for those who are sick, for those who are lost, for your dear earth that gasps for health, for your dear innocents who are targets of random violence, war, and neglect. Help us remember that we are your beloved children and that we live in your beloved world and that we are alive and can experience life Bring your healing and love in the corners and streets and spaces in which we live and move and have our being. We pray in the name of our maker, our savior, and our friend. Amen. And let's sing together, let all things now living.
Go from this place with joy. Give thanks to God, proclaiming his goodness, celebrating his love, and worshiping him with your lives. For he is the Lord our God, faithful to a thousand generations. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and among you in the days ahead.